Hi guys, welcome back to Christian Communities, a personal plan for real life survival step-by-step -step walkthrough playlist. Grab your personal plan and turn to page 90. In today's video, we are covering medication, first aid, toilet and hygiene. In your personal plan, page 101 and 102 covers medication, first aid, toilet and hygiene. And in the chapter, essential survival skills, page 208 to page 253 covers first aid. It also covers herbal and medicinal remedies. So that's 45 pages dedicated to first aid within essential survival skills, as it's really important that we know what to do in emergency situations. Now let's talk about medication. I have come across people as a part of the Christian communities in the past and online, all saying something very similar, not everybody, but a lot of people. They all say this, Stop taking medication. Come off medication. Mate, I tell you, hearing that makes me freaking angry. Why? There are certain health conditions that if you stop taking medication, you're either going to suffer tremendously or potentially die. Do not listen to that advice. Instead, I recommend that you do this. Stock up on as much medication that you possibly can. Stock it in your vehicle and in your survival day pack, all right? And at exactly the same time, really learn your health condition and look at your locations intelligence list and study what plants can you use that is herbal or medicinal that will help you once your medication has run out. And once you've learned those plants, write it up within your personal plan. So let me give you an example of like researching your health condition. For example, I'm an insulin dependent diabetic and there are actually millions of people worldwide that suffer with diabetes and I've actually done a whole section on diabetes in here. So if you struggle with diabetes, don't worry. But look, what I've come to find is this, right? When we flee, it's not necessarily that we're going to run into hypers. This means that your glucose are high in your system all the time. It's more that we're going to run into hypos. That means your glucose are very low, all right? And so we take insulin at the moment, or I take insulin at the moment, to try and bring my glucose down to a normal level of a healthy person. The thing is, when we flee, there's going to be the scarcity of food, lack of food. Obviously, we're going to ration our food and we're going to hunt and try and survive off the land as long as we possibly can. But what it means is, for us diabetics, is our glucose are going to drop a lot. We're going to be more in the lows. So do we need to pack insulin? Well, in my opinion, no. I don't think we do. I mean, you could pack maybe one or two pens, but it's very unlikely that we're actually going to need insulin out there. Do you know what I mean? Instead, what we will need is glucose tablets, because when we set up our camp and we're surviving off the land, you know, eating meat, for example, there's not much glucose in that. Vegetation, there's not much glucose in that. It's more bread, rice, pasta, sugary foods, which we're not really going to have out there, are we? You know, apart from whatever we've um, stockpiled and we ration. But then even if you're eating the rations and you do have high glucose foods, we're all going to be doing camp tar. So like gathering wood, that's using energy, you know, hunting, tracking, trapping. That means moving. I once heard a diabetic nurse say to me, exercise equals insulin. And at the moment, as I record this video, I'm started, I've started the gym again recently. I'm trying to lose my belly. I've got a fatty liver. I'm trying to lose the belly. I'm trying to build muscle. And I have a, a Libra sensor in my arm, Freestyle Libra. And I get accurate readings of where my glucose are at every day. And I've noticed by doing exercise, my glucose drop. So I find that I don't need to inject the 24-hour pen. And I don't really need to inject this one much. Right? So that's just monitoring it now. But when we flee... And we're going to be doing like camp tasks again, like hunting, tracking, trapping, gathering wood, you know, maintaining our camp. The exercise is going to equal low glucose levels. And so my findings are that it is most likely we are going to struggle with our glucose dropping. And that is a problem. However, I have put it in here and made it clear that if you have any diabetics as a part of your community, or if you are a diabetic, that diabetics must be prioritized when it comes to food. You know, again, another example, the average human being that is healthy without diabetes can last about three weeks without food. A diabetic could die within a day without food. 
it's that serious. So I've pointed out in here, when it comes to food rationings, if you have diabetics as part of your community, they must be prioritized with food. So if you're a diabetic watching this, I would probably recommend that you stock up on gluco tablets or something sweet that you can store up in bulk. But this is just diabetes. There are hundreds of different health conditions. So what you've got to do is thoroughly research your condition and look at what can you do to help yourself when you have no more medication. Of course, do everything through prayer. Pray about what I'm saying. So when it comes to what to pack for medication, really look at your medication and see if you need it. And if you do, try and stock up on as much of it as you possibly can. And you can make a note of it within your personal plan under my kit list. So you can write down what medication you've got, how much of it you've got, just make a note of it. Also look at other alternatives as in herbal or medicinal plants that you can use once your medication has run out. Pray about this, okay? So pack as much as you possibly can of your medication. First aid, make sure that you pack yourself a decent first aid kit. Obviously you will need this as an absolute minimum. However, this is really important. If right now you're a doctor or you're a nurse, all right, your skills will need to be carried over to our community, all right, when we flee. So whatever trade you have right now, carry that skill over to our community. For example, when it comes to assigning camp tasks to different members within our community, you wouldn't say to a doctor, oh, go and chop down trees and gather wood and make a fire, and then say to a carpenter, oh, you know, go and look after the sick. You wouldn't do that. You would say to the doctor, go and look after the sick. And you'd say to the carpenter, go and gather firewood, wouldn't you? What we do is we utilize the skills and the qualifications we've got now, and we carry those skills over to our camp. So if you're a doctor now, be a doctor at our camp. If you're a carpenter now, be a carpenter on camp. Anyway, my point is, if you're a doctor through prayer, pack the best that you possibly can for helping yourself and helping others as a part of your community. All right, it's really important. But if you're not a doctor watching this, then we all need first aid kit like this as an absolute bare minimum, all right? So in here, there's like bandages, there's a tourniquet, there's plasters, there's wipes, there's scissors. You know what I mean? Pack it with the sort of things that you feel that you will need. But remember, there are 45 pages dedicated to first aid within our personal plan. But you will need a mini first aid kit such as this as a bare minimum for each one of us. And again, if you're a doctor watching this, please pack what you can proper gear for the community. Pray about this. So I'm just using a bag. This goes in here and this will go into my day pack along with medication that I've packed. Once again, turning back to page 38. My kit list, you can write in about your first aid kit and the items in there if you want to, all right? All right, moving on to toilet and hygiene. Page 115, we have camp planning. Go over a few pages and we have camp water source order. So drinking and cooking water first, fishing, camp washing, camp animal processing, camp toilets. So at your safe location, your toilet would be the last station in the river, if this makes sense. It's all in the personal plan. Now you don't actually need to pack toilet roll, all right? I know it sounds disgusting, but you don't. Hot water kills 99.99999% of germs, bacteria, and viruses. Once you go to the toilet, in the last station of your water source, you could just heat up some water and clean yourself. This here is baby wipes. However, I recommend that you pack yourself a flannel. So what you could do is boil some water, let it cool down a bit and put it in a pot and use a flannel and you could dunk it in that water, clean yourself up, squeeze it out, more hot water and clean yourself like that. In other words, the flannel is reusable and you just keep doing that every single time you go to the toilet. Put it in the water, clean yourself up, done. So going toilet in the last station on your water source, what this means is, is all your waste will be washed away. There'll be no horrible smell, there'll be nothing left behind. The water source will naturally carry it away. Hygiene. I recommend, and this is pretty serious actually, pack yourself a couple of toothbrushes and toothpaste. Yes, your toothpaste will run out. You can actually use charcoal. So you take charcoal from your fire, a nice dry bit, and you want to sprinkle it down into a powder, mix it with a little bit of water, Put that on your toothbrush and you can brush your teeth. You can even make a makeshift toothbrush 
out of a, a stick and pine needles. So that's teeth sorting out. So whilst I was filming this bit of video, I completely forgot that we can use charcoal to brush our teeth. And as I was filming, our Lord reminded me that we can use charcoal. So I just want to thank our Lord. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we can use charcoal to brush our teeth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. Washing ourselves. This here is shower gel. Uh, obviously, this is going to run out, but hot water kills 99.99999% germs, bacteria, viruses. All right. So once your shower gel runs out, plain old hot water. I know it sounds a bit skanky, but, you know, you could wash yourself every day with hot water, then maybe once a week use a bit of shower gel for your hair and just freshen yourself up, or once a month, do you know what I mean? This is survival we're talking about. Make sure you pack yourself toothpaste, toothbrush, a bottle of shower gel. I strongly recommend that you pack yourself a flannel. I've got baby wipes. I'm also packing myself skin cream. I get really bad dry skin on my face and hands every time I have a shower, so yeah, packing that. And don't forget a towel, all right? This is a small little towel. You could pack yourself a full length body towel, but for me, I'm aware that that takes up a lot of space. So a small little towel will do fine for me. And we'll just pack this into our day kit. Again, we can sort bags out later, but we know where it all is at the moment. Sweet. So at the moment, I'm covering like personal kit, but obviously planning together as a community. Remember I was talking in the last video about getting containers up at our safe location. We could stock in bulk, shower gel, toothpaste, stuff like that. But remember, food always takes priority. And when it comes to looking after your personal hygiene, it's really important that you wash at least once every single day. The main areas, your hair, under your arms, your downstairs department, and your feet. By washing these areas, you are preventing potential infections. So it's not just keeping clean, smelling good, and feeling good, you are actually preventing infections by keeping clean. Remember to always wash your hands before you eat food. We all know this, it's common knowledge, but I need to share it with you anyway, all right? So you must wash yourself at least once a day, every day, and brush your teeth. Prevents infections in your mouth as well. All right, your survival skills are all within a central survival skills chapter within your personal plan. And again, turning back to page 38, my kit list, you can write here medication, first aid, and the items you've packed for toilet for personal hygiene. Okay, so I've wrote down more important information within my kit list from this video of what I've packed. And once you're happy with medication, first aid, toilet, and hygiene, you can now tick it off on page 90, medication, first aid, toilet and hygiene. And now we have one more video to cover on what to pack, and that is light at night. If you still need a copy of your personal plan, click on the description. You will see a list of links come up for different countries. Click on the country that you live in and you can order your copy there. Bless you guys, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video, you be safe.